Hello everyone, that was a little demo song that I recorded to kind of showcase the different IRs from Bogren Digital. There's some stuff for everything. There's a, a couple of clean parts, there's a long riff section with a bunch of different kind of riff situations where you have single string stuff, death metal -y stuff, and also some big chords and some chugging. And we also have a little solo and some leads kind of complementing the song. I'm gonna go through the mix a little bit. I'm gonna focus mainly on the guitars, but I'm also gonna show a little bit about the drums and bass. So first we have the drums, of course. Just a little bit about, firstly, the kick. I'm usually a very big fan of kicks with kind of a rich, complex high end, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't really like the kind of clicky thing you get when it sounds almost a bit like a hammer against a table or something. I prefer more like a slab of meat against a wall, kind of a thing. Um, so what I've done is I'm using Superior Drummer, but I've printed out the tracks here. And I'm also using one of my own samples to kind of shape the high end even more. So here we can hear the Superior Drummer kick on its own. Then adding in the extra sample. It adds a bit of meatiness to the low end as well as shaping the high end a little bit. Uh, this is the sample that I've got. And together they work really nicely to kind of create that big fat thing that I like in kicks. With the snare I'm going more of a ringy path that I usually do. This is two samples blended where one is kind of a meat and potatoes kind of snare with a lot of mids and you know it sounds like a normal snare if that makes sense and then a very ringy sample as well uh, both inside Superior Drummer and this is how that sounds. I also like to actually keep the kick uh, thing kind of rattling the snare wires a little bit, which can add a little bit of realism, especially in parts where uh, there's no wall of guitars. It just sounds a bit more like a real drum kit. So yeah, I, I thought we could just go through those two and then this is the entire kit on its own. I've actually got a little bit more kick in the rooms than you might usually expect from programmed drums. I've recently started liking it a lot to let the kick bloom out a little bit. As long as you remove, there's usually a resonance between 1 and 200 uh, in the rooms from the kick that can become a little bit muddy if you leave it in. But in this case, um, I kept a lot of the rest of the kick in the rooms, so to say. Same with the overheads. I find that leaving both kick and snare in the overheads uh, kind of adds cohesion to the whole kit. I don't like when it's too separated and it kind of feels, especially with the kick, that without room or overhead sounds it can kind of become this isolated little thing outside of the drum kit. So yeah, that was a little bit about the drums. Then we have the bass. This bass is programmed. It's the nuclear bass from uh, Ode Home Audio. It's a sampled uh, Dingwall uh, NG2, I believe. Um, I programmed the bass for two different reasons. Firstly, I don't want to waste the precious life of the strings, because bass strings can be very expensive, especially for my Dingwall. And then uh, this whole song is also mostly about the guitars anyways, uh, since I'm going to show you the IR stuff. Uh, so I figured it doesn't matter as much having the bass being real. So this is how it sounds on its own. So the printed part is just a DI, but I like to put basses through uh, some kind of amp. Uh, so we've got a distortion pedal here before to saturate the signal a little bit and then uh, we have the MPEG SVT Pro from Plugin Alliance which is a nice thing to get it to sound kind of modern but still very fat and in this case I didn't want to keep too much of the high end. I sometimes like to just have the bass as a fat kind of carpet um, that shines through when it should but it's not the focus of this mix so it doesn't need to be super bright or twangy. On to the guitars. We have firstly the clean ones, um, there's a couple of different ones here happening, uh, there's two different ones in the intro. One is playing just chords like this, 
and the other one is kind of an arpeggio thing happening. And together they're kind of creating this big nice cluster of chords almost. So let's go to the first one here. This is a recorded DI, but I'm using the Archetype Nolly uh, plugin from Neural DSP. It's the first amp, which is uh, mostly a clean one. You can see I've got the gain pretty low, and it's not made to be bright or anything. I thought that this chord thing will fit best as kind of a background mid-range thing complementing the main melody. Before the amp I actually have a compressor which is set to the smooth setting which means that the attack is very quick um, so it engages very quickly on the transient so you won't get too much pick attack and instead you get more sustain out of it which fit very well with the chords uh, being played. Then onto the cab in the neural DSP plugins you can uh, load your own IR, so I've done this here from the clean pack, the meat and potatoes, which fit kind of well with what I wanted from this sound. I wanted kind of a meat and potatoes mid-range foundation to be in the background to support the arpeggio melody. Then afterwards I also have an 1176 style compressor which if it's modeled correctly these uh, 1176 style compressors are always very fast, even on the slowest attack setting, which is 1 in this case, the slowest attack is still very fast, it's 0 0.8 milliseconds, so it's not even 1 millisecond. So this is also doing kind of the same thing as the compressor before the amp did, but I'm further kind of reducing the pick attack and increasing the sustain to have the chords lay around and not be like a short spike and then quickly disappearing underneath everything else. I also sent this one to some reverb. The guitar reverb here, I use the same reverb for all guitars uh, just so to have it whenever I need to send something there. I send it to this little plate. Four seconds, remove a bunch of low end. This low cut looks like it would be very close to 1k but actually it's around 400 something. If you look here, the actual number is 467. It's probably not a very steep cut anyways so it doesn't remove too much low end. So this is how the reverb itself sounds. You can see you still have some stuff even down to 200, so it's not everything removed to 400. Then the melody is also the same amp. There's a little bit more gain here. Uh, I have the same compressor set to snappy because I wanted a little bit more uh, pick attack coming through, but it's still compressing it so it becomes a bit more even sounding. For the cab I have a different one, this one is Post Reveries, which was very fitting because uh, the last part of this intro, I accidentally wrote it by playing a part from The Baying of the Hounds from Ghost Reveries by Opeth, but I played it in standard tuning instead of uh, the D-A-D-F-A-E, which they used on the album, and I'm playing it I was kinda, hmm, that sounds a bit cool, let's use that somewhere. So if you play this part, That's a part from The Baying of the Hounds. This one I didn't compress afterwards, however, I've controlled some of the peaks coming through in the frequency spectrum here. Um, some notes are lower than others, of course, so these two are kind of controlling that, so they don't stick out too much. Same with, there was a resonance here, which came through a lot on the higher notes, which um, I wanted to even it out a little bit, so we can listen without these and then add them in. So yeah, even it sit out a little bit. Then in this interlude part, the clean one and two are just kept the same basically. Uh, but I'm not compressing clean one anymore. I automated away the 1176 after the intro. Uh, because I wanted a little bit of pick attack to come through in this part since this is mostly single string stuff happening. Clean 3 however is a bit different, um, although not hugely different because I used the same amp, snappy compression again, uh, a bit higher gain similar to clean 1. This has a bright switch enabled as well and it's also slightly scooped here in the middle. And I've got a third IR which is the Telocast Me and this one really kind of enhance the rich but not too 
abrasive high end, uh, which felt very nice, especially for this little chord here at the end, which I ripped off from uh, Octavarium by Dream Theater. So yeah, it was a pretty nice thing happening there. Also on these two, I did use the internal effects, which is a delay and then a reverb. There's no real reason why I used the internal and then used the sand on this one. It's basically just what I kind of felt like at the time. Then from the main clean bus, I've just made these general adjustments to kind of keep some of the low end away, scooped out a little bit of the boxiness or honkiness around 1k, and a little bit of a high cut just to uh, keep the highest shine out of there. Sometimes I want a lot of that, but this time I felt I want a little bit more. Kind of a mid-range focused clean sound. Uh, although I did boost a little bit of high end as well. But since I removed a bunch of stuff up here, this is more boosting the stuff that's around the high mids, essentially. Even though this says 8k, this is a shelf that's very very gentle, so it goes all the way down to maybe 1k or even lower than that. Which is very common with uh, these analog kind of style EQs. Then we have the rhythm guitars. These are double tracked uh, DIs. I'm using the same plugin but a different amp. Uh, this is the third one, which is the kind of 5150 style amp. I've used an overdrive in front, which is a very common trick uh, for distorted guitars overall. It's good when you want it to sound a little bit more modern and kind of cut out a little bit of the flubby low end. So what I usually do is I set the amp gain at first to where I think it's a little bit too low, but still distorting. Then I add the overdrive in, put the level at full and none of the drive inside the pedal, and then adjust the tone to what the amp might need. This boosts the signal to where the distortion from the amp doesn't become as mushy. It's more of a tight, defined, and as I said, modern sound, which worked well for this track because there was a lot of clarity needed from all the big chords and also tightness for the low chugs. Uh, then I believe I did increase the gain a little bit further after that. I haven't done a huge slot with the EQ here, I find that since these uh, Bogren IRs are made to be a little bit more mix ready, uh, you don't have to sculpt the sound as much, neither in the amp nor afterwards. For the cabs, I used first the Bald Beauty and I blended that with the Northern Comfort. The Bald Beauty is the first one in the list, I believe, and uh, the Northern Conf uh, kind of complemented it in a way. Let's listen to what they sound like on their own. Here together they kind of blend nicely and it's kind of smooth out the sound especially in the northern comfort has a very distinct kind of mid-range to it and a very it's a very bright one uh, but i feel like they kind of smooth out the spectrum a little bit together which um it's a good way to make it sound a little bit more unique compared to just using one uh, ir if you use an ir that sounds very distinct that can be very nice sometimes but when you use it too much, it's gonna become a bit easy to spot and it's like, oh this guy uses the same IR and everything uh, but when you blend it like this uh, you have endless possibilities because just blending two of these you won't really know which one I used and it's also difficult to kind of pick them out it's different from say drum samples where let's say we have one snare sound that's uh, fat but a bit dull then you use a brighter one to blend it in you get a bit more attack but you keep the, the fatness if they're in phase. With uh, IRs, you never really know exactly how it's going to sound afterwards when you blend them. So that's a really nice way to kind of make it sound a bit more unique. And in some IR loaders you can even load more than two. You can have up to eight different IRs. So you can even like create more tracks and use a plethora of IRs and just blend it all and make a big soup of sound which no one else is going to be able to replicate. And you might stumble on something super cool when you're blending like this. Afterwards I have a little bit of EQ. This low cut is mainly a bit of safety just to keep it from clashing with the bass. I'm also controlling the low mids here, which is usually where the palm mutes can become a bit overbearing. 
So as soon as you're palm muting, you're getting a bunch of more low end usually from the amp and that varies with the kind of amp. But in this case, I felt I had to control that a little bit. So this is a dynamic EQ band. So we can listen to the palm mute here happening and then afterwards when the big chords are being played, those don't have as much low end, so it's not reacting to those. Then I also have uh, a little bit of mid scoop. Um, with a more raw kind of IR, I would have maybe needed to sculpt the sound a bunch more with uh, different EQ moves here, but I just felt in this case a little bit of mid scoop was all that I wanted there to kind of make it sound a little bit more shiny and a little bit less boxy. Then I've also had to remove one uh, nasty resonance here. This was kind of a whistling sound that came through. Let's listen without it and then I add it. So it's this kind of sound. And then we've removed a little bit of high end to not keep it too bright sounding. Because the, the very bright stuff above 10k or so can sometimes be a bit much uh, in a full mix context. Then I have this uh, SSL EQ again, um, and I've used it just as a little bit of a brightness boost. I usually don't even need to change uh, the frequency band. I just keep it at the default 8 kilohertz and then increase it as I see fit. Then we have a solo. I'm usually not a solo guitarist really, so I've had to do a bit more to the sound. Uh, compared to maybe if we had someone better than me playing it. Just like with the cleans, I've compressed this uh, DI a little bit before the amp. This time I'm using the Mega Duel from Plugin Alliance, uh, and this one doesn't have any pedals before the amp inside the plugin, so I've had to do it with this one. And the same Black 76 one, just evening the sound out overall. Then uh, I also have the, this overdrive. This is doing the same thing as with the rhythms essentially, uh, but this is its own plugin. Full volume, no drive, a bit of tone boost. And the Mega Duel here, this is based on a dual rectifier, which is a very nice amp. I like it a lot. Um, this plugin doesn't uh, let you load your own IRs here, so I've selected the empty one, and then I've loaded a Bugren IR in uh, the STL Tones NAT IR. This is the hair apparently, which is based on uh, another Opeth song uh, uh, that has a very nice solo in it. Then we have some more EQ. I'm doing way more here compared to the rhythms. So as a solo, uh, the pick attack usually has a lot of bumpy low end that kind of boop, boop, boop. sounds like someone in the other room walking on the floor or something. So I've removed a bunch of low end up to 200 here. Uh, I've scooped out a lot of the low to mid mids kind of, and then also control a similar kind of peak to the rhythm guitars, however this one wasn't the same kind of whistle happening, instead this was more of a an abrasive kind of bitey thing coming through on some of the notes, which is why I'm using a dynamic band here. Some high cut and a little bit of control of the peaks in the high mids here as well, to kind of tuck the sound in a little bit. I've also compressed it afterwards as well, just because a solo uh, is usually a way more kind of dynamic thing, where the notes have very different volume to them. It's not the same kind of wall of sound as a rhythm pair. Uh, so I've compressed it a little bit to even it out and I also had to automate the volume a little bit on some notes to make sure that everything came through the rhythm guitars. Uh, otherwise some notes would disappear a little bit too much. I've also automated down the volume a little bit on the rhythms where the solo is happening. Then finally a little bit of brightness boost here as well. Then I've also sent the solo to both reverb and delay to make it sound a bit more spacey. In this case the delay is a ping pong stereo delay and I've removed a bunch of low and high end to make it not take too much attention in the sides when it's bouncing around. But ping pong is something I like a lot for solos, uh, especially at the end when a solo is kind of sliding out uh, and you hear the final echoes coming through both speakers. Then we have this little lead part at the end, uh, the same Noli plugin but the amp number 2. I used the same approach with an overdrive but this is the second overdrive. I felt that this sound needed to be similar to the clean chord in the beginning. I wanted this sound to be a bit more mid-range focused and I didn't want it to cut through too much in the high end and not take too much space in the low end either. So I've used this one to remove some treble and bass. It's just nice to have that control in this case. This amp is kind of a Marshall style and it's not really a metal amp, it's more of a rock kind of amp. So I had to put the gain up all the way to 9, uh, even after having the boost. Uh, remove some bass and 
went up with the mids a little bit to further kind of enhance that mid-range thing that I wanted out of these. For the IR, I have the Amon to that from the lead pack. And this one I found worked well for the role that I needed the lead guitars to play in this part. Following that with even more low cut than the solo, just to keep any flub out of there. More high cut as well, and a little bit of the similar kind of resonance control up here. And a couple of scoops here, just very slight. So the main kind of focus is around the mids here, 1 to 2k, just to complement the rhythm guitars and not take too much attention. Also a slight brightness boost here as well, because uh, I felt I needed it at the time. Also as a little creative kind of bonus, um, I let the whole mix go through uh, an IR uh, in this part here. It's the same plugin that I used for the solo, and it's the same IRs on both sides. So yeah, that's a bit of an unexpected way to be a little bit more creative with the IRs. Uh, why not put it somewhere where you're not expecting it to be? So it affects the sound a lot, as you can hear. <laughs> So yeah, it kind of simulates that thing of being in the rehearsal room with a little combo amp and maybe plugging in the phone to listen to music while you're jamming. Also, you could maybe use this as uh, an effect for an intro or something. It's very common to do this thing where you make the whole thing sound like it's in a telephone by just cutting high end and low end at the same time. And then kind of removing those slowly to open the mix up for the intro. Why not use an IR and kind of blend that in and then make it sound a bit more unique? Why not? So yeah, I hope you found it useful to kind of see how you could use these IRs in different ways, you know, blending and using different ones for different parts, or even putting it on the whole mix. Why not? This has been Johan with the Bogren IR Packs, and I'll see you in the future.